Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Time for a miscellaneous vinyl update, which, again, I haven't done. Man, it's been a long time since I just did non-metal. Um, so let's just jump into it. Uh, this actually came out a couple years ago now. Was this 2021? Yeah. Um, and I finally got around to spinning it about six months ago. And it's been a pretty regular rotation. I wasn't expecting much from this. And I don't remember if it was Scott. Somebody told me I should check it out. It's really good. You know, most of the guys I love from Yes are no longer there. Um, their last few albums have just been okay for me. I really enjoyed this. Um, I got it for a good price. Oh, that was part of the problem, too. When it came out, it was like 40 bucks because it came with the two CDs and the two albums. Um, and one of my local stores had it for like 26 bucks, So I grabbed it. I really, really enjoyed this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to spin this again when I get done with the video. But uh, Yes, the Quest, the, the, the most recent from Yes, uh, definitely worth checking out if you're a Yes fan. I don't know why I didn't get into this band in the 90s. Um, I love Alice in Chains. It's one of my all-time favorite bands. I love Soundgarden. Um, I love Nirvana. Um, Stone Temple Pilots. Um all the contemporaries of this band I liked and I just it was one of those things where they weren't really on the radio around me and uh so I just never got, I never really heard their music I knew of the guys in the band um I believe it's the drummer that was in um that was in uh, Mad Season which is the Mad Season record above uh one of probably one of my top three favorite albums of all time uh, but, uh, and, and I, I knew who Mark Lanigan was, uh, but I just had never bought this album. It's fantastic. Glad to finally have this in the collection. This is dust, uh, from the screaming trees. I believe this is the MOV. I'm going to say, yeah, the MOV pressing sounds really good. Um, uh, if you haven't checked out the screaming trees, um, Mark Lanigan is just a fantastic vocalist, a great band and, uh, really one of the, One of these Seattle bands that should have been just as big as Alice in Chains and Soundgarden. I mean, they were they were all contemporaries. They all did stuff together. For some reason, they just never got as big as the others. Next up, I've had this for a couple of years, honestly, and I finally got around to spinning it just because, you know, I played this a lot back in the day uh, when I first got it on CD. Um Analog Productions did the 33 RPM. And actually what made me finally listen to it is they just announced the 40. Um, they did the 33. They just announced the 40, 45 RPM box set. The four LPs. I don't think it's worth it. Buy this one for 59 bucks. Um, this is this thing sounds fantastic. But this is Amused to Death from Roger Waters. Part of it is I just don't like Roger Waters' solo stuff. As much as I like David Gilmore's solo stuff. I don't like Roger Waters as much as I like David Gilmore. I think he's a douchebag. But uh, I still love his music. And uh, I really liked this back in the day. When, when did this come out? I can't even remember. I can't even read it. It's too damn small. But uh, we listened to this a lot when it came out. Um, so I'm glad to have it on vinyl. I This thing sounds fantastic. I don't think it's worth the 150 bucks or whatever the 4LP box is worth. That's everything you need right there. Uh, speaking of analog productions, I've been buying the uh, the Prestige series. Part of that is the Bluesville records from Lightning Hopkins. Um, I never he's one of those guys I just never got into. And I always knew who Lightning Hopkins was, and a lot of guys that I love have covered Lightning Hop Lightning Hopkins songs. Um, but man, this one blew me away. So I've bought a, I've ordered a couple others um, from Analog Productions, but this is. Uh, going away just really killer blues um really really dug this one I, I didn't read up on this one too much but uh man they're doing a great job on the prestige series so that's some of the best sounding stuff coming out of analog anal, analog production right i don't know why i can't talk today next up robin trower beyond the mist this is an album i had never seen before so 
it says recorded live in April 85. I believe it's recorded live in the studio because it sounds like a studio album. But, uh, and two of the songs are, and then five of the songs are recorded live. But uh, this was really good. Not, not that I should be surprised. I mean, I, I love Robin Trower. This was 70, I can't even, it doesn't even say on the back. I want to say, oh, what am I saying? It was recorded in April 1985, so this is mid-80s. But uh, uh, Robin Trower, good as always. I love this album art here. Um, I, like I said, I had never seen this one before. It was like 15 bucks, um, so I grabbed it. Um, I don't think I've ever bought a Robin Trower album and been disappointed. Um, even some of the 80s stuff that's very 80s sounding is still really good. Uh, another Analog Productions. I, I finally got around to buying the, the Stevie Ray Vaughns. Um, this one's Texas Flood. I believe I've bought all of them now. except These are the 45 RPMs. Um, except for the one with him and his brother. I don't like that album at all. Um, never have. If you do, I'm sorry. Uh, but Texas Flood. Had to grab that one. This next one. Uh, so, there's been a lot of talk... Especially Dylan um, from Noble Records has talked quite a bit about the Zamrock stuff. And there have been some Zamrock bands that I've really liked. Um, but kind of the king of those bands is Witch. And I had never listened to them. Um, so I went ahead and bought this one. And I was blown away how good this is. I've got two more Witch albums I haven't listened to yet. Um, I listened to this back to back a bunch of times. Um, it's just so good. Um, this is in the past. These represses sound fantastic. You can get them for like 15, 20 bucks. Um, there's a few other Zamrock bands I've really gotten into. Uh, I'm, I'm going back and forth whether I'm going to buy the Vinyl Me Please Zamrock box set before it sells out. But uh, the only reason I, I didn't buy it is because there's three albums in there that I really, really like. And there's three albums that, that just sound okay to me. But uh, all this witch stuff. And, and, and here's, here's how they kind of talk about it. electrified by a diet of james brown the stones deep purple uh which were a stadium fi stadium filling kings of 70s zam rock um there is definitely some stones in here um there is definitely some deep purple in here um just really killer um highly 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 recommend checking these guys out if you have not uh, next up, I did a punk video a while back where I showed um, a few of the Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. I mentioned that there was only one of their albums that I was missing, so I went online and bought that one album. Um, that Maybe that same day, but this is another anniversary edition. So it's got the gold, or I'm sorry, the silver um, embossed logo. But this is Have a Ball. Um, kind of the first one, but it's got Danny Song leaving on a jet plane, uh, 110 Soldier, Fire and Rain, Sweet Caroline, Rocket Man. Um, it's, you know, it's just a bunch of punk guys uh, doing pop songs. And it's uh, really good. This one I was really excited about. And I'm so disappointed by the pressing quality. And, and it's it's been happening with Pink Floyd. In 2016, they did all those remasters where the mastering was fantastic. Really clean sounding. And they all, every one of my bought has had little pops. This is by far the worst, though. It does sound better after two or three uh, cycles through the um, Humming Guru back there. But, uh, and man, the mastering sounds so good. It's the best that this sound record has ever sounded. Unfortunately, because it's a shitty pressing, it's also the worst the record's ever sounded. Uh, which is very sad because this is this is probably my second or third favorite uh, Pink Floyd album, um, Animals. Uh, it's ultimately it's just a, it's just a disappointment, you know. Maybe after a few more cleanings, I can get it to sound a little bit better. Uh, next up, I wasn't going to buy this one. Uh, so when Mobile Fidelity did the Dire Straits records, I was only going to buy the debut. Um, that's by far my favorite. I've now bought three of the four. And because I've bought three of the four, I'll probably buy the fourth one if I see it. Um, I'm not going to go out of my way to find it. But uh, this is Brother in Arms. Um, oh, what's the song on here? Money for Nothing. I've heard so many times that I don't, I barely listen to this record just because that song is on it. And it's, I've been driven nuts. I love Mark Knopfler's guitar playing. It's amazing to me that he was a finger picker uh, and, and got such an amazing sound. But, uh, 
Uh, amazing album. That song has just been so overplayed for the entirety of my life, uh, for the most part. Uh, this is not a new one. Um, I pulled this out just because I wanted to give it a spin. Um, I wanted to do kind of a sound comparison. I haven't decided I'm a, if I'm going to do a video on it because both of these are hard to find. But uh, I had the Jethro Tull um, UHQR uh, of Aqualung. Aqualung is one of my all-time favorite records. Uh, and I wanted to... I, I went ahead and spun that. And then it made me want to pull out this one, which until which has this has always been my favorite pressing of this record i've heard that uh stephen wilson did a, i believe it was stephen wilson did a mastering in like 2010 or 11 that's supposed to be a little bit better but uh this is the the mo5 from 79 or 80 i this is one of the early early mo5s um uh, this is mo5 what does it say number 61 um but this is the mo5 aqualong um and that was one it took it was a it I had to buy five or six copies of this. And luckily I bought them all for good prices and made a profit on them. Um, but it took me that long to find one that was in really, that was really clean and sounded really good. Uh, next up, uh, I picked this up a couple years ago. Um, I pulled it out to do a shootout with one of the recent represses and just haven't got around to doing it. I haven't said it's from going to, um, but this is the self-titled uh, later change to verses um, Pearl jam this is an original pressing. I will say, shootout or not, this one blows the represses away, uh, which is not generally the case for 90s albums. Uh, but this one sounds really, uh, really good. There's the hype sticker right there. Uh, let's see, next up. So after listening to those, um, I just happened to be at a store uh, right after I listened to the Aqualungs and ran across this really nice, this is like a, uh, a year after uh, repress. Um, UK repress uh, of This Was from Jethro Tull. Just one of the great debut albums. The first three Jethro Tulls are the only ones I ever listened to, and I listened to those all quite a bit. Um, I had Everybody told me that the UK pressings were the best sounding, so when I found this one for, I think I paid $25 for this, and the vinyl is mint. You can see the, the, the record jacket is in excellent condition. Um, I was shocked to find it for, for that cheap. Next up, another of the Prestige series, Eric Dolphy at the five spot. I've talked about Eric Dolphy, my all-time favorite jazz musician. Um, I think he's the best solo jazz soloist ever. Um, people can argue with me, whatever. Eric Dolphy is where it's at. Uh, I didn't have this one at all. I had it on CD. Um, so really happy to finally have this one. And again, the Prestige series. Um, they're all at that 35 to $40 price point and they all sound fantastic. Uh, as I slowly, uh, just, uh, as I repress, I'm grabbing the Miles Davises. This one is Milestones. Um, not a favorite of mine. Uh, when was this? This is early seventies, right? Once again, it doesn't say, um, but they finally did a, a repress of this. I wish they would say when these were, you know, leave the, the, oh man, 1958. I don't know why I thought I said seventies. Um, not a favorite of mine though, but still a really good album. You've got, uh, let's say who's on, yeah, Cannonball Adderley, Red Garland. I love the stuff that he did with Red Garland. Um, I need to check out some of Red Garland's albums, um, as well. Uh, cause I've heard that, that his solo stuff is, is really good as well. Uh, Lord Such, uh, this is just one of those albums that if you're into Zeppelin or, or, or Jeff Beck or any of those guys, you should have this one. Um, I finally found a really nice copy. This is, uh, was this UK? No, this is a US pressing. Um, it's so hard to find this in good condition, though. Even this one's got some ring wear, but the vinyl itself is, is in excellent condition. Um, again, like the same store is the Jethro Toll for like... Uh, 10 or 15 bucks that I paid for this one as well. Uh, speaking of Jeff Beck, uh, this is one somebody was selling for like 15 bucks online, so I went ahead and grabbed it. This is uh, Ola from Beck. Um, just Beck at his best. So good. Um, and Rod Stewart, these first couple Jeff Beck albums, I, I like the Faces stuff, um, but the first couple with Jeff Beck, especially the debut, is the best that Rod Stewart ever sounded. And he always sounded good. So, I mean, that that, that really says something. But uh, 
Um, I want to find a really nice early UK pressing of that one um, at some point, uh, as well as uh, the debut. Again, the Stevie Ray Vaughn's. This is Soul to Soul. I'm not going to go into that one too much. You guys know about that record. Oh, let's see. So this is the one everybody's been raving about. This is the What's Going On 45. Is it 45 RPM? I don't think it is now that I think about it. No. It's a deluxe edition, basically. Um, I can't remember who did this one. It doesn't say. I don't know if it was maybe Ryan Smith or one of those guys, but uh, everybody was talking about how this this is the audiophile must-have pressing of what's going on. I think it sounds really good. This has always been a good-sounding record, though. I have a Tamla pressing that, from like 15 years ago. This sounds a little bit better, uh, but not a whole lot. Um, and I already had all the stuff on the uh, the original mono singles and then the uh, stripped-down versions from Side 3. I already had those in a deluxe edition uh, double CD set. So if you already have a really nice pressing of what's going on, um, I don't think you need to spend 35 or 40 bucks, whatever this is going for, uh, for the 2LP set. Um, those Tamla pressings all sound really, really good. And then last but not least, um, speaking of Intervention Records, oh, that was the last video, sorry. Um, in my country vit update, I did uh, talked about Intervention. So Intervention has done two of the Everclear records. And it's really cool to see some 90s album artists get some audiophile love. Um, Intervention did a really good job with these. Um, Sparkle and Fade was their bigger, biggest, bigger, bigger album. Um, but the follow-up to this, I like better. And I think Intervention did a little bit better job on. Um, they all sound good, though. And uh, the only thing that sucked about this was... It took almost, two, I want to say it was close to two years. I, I pre-ordered it the, like the day they announced it. And I just got it like six months ago. Uh, it doesn't even say. And it may be, it may be, and, and I don't know if that was the first time that Interventions releases. Because Intervention will press a bunch and then sell them. And then you can still order them from their website. Uh, and, and it happened with one of their other albums, too, where I ordered it. Uh, I ordered the repress, and it was like a year before it came in. So that's the one issue I have with Intervention. But uh, that's it, guys. Just wanted to do a quick miscellaneous vinyl update. I hope everybody's doing good. I will see you soon. Uh, take care, BC.